All right, how's it going everybody? Jesse Pitella here with Redefine FX and this video will be an introduction to Niagara for Typhlo users. So in 3ds Max, we would initiate Typhlo by creating a new Typhlo object and then opening the editor. In Unreal Engine, we will right click and just create a new Niagara system. And we can say create empty Niagara system and open it up. So you can ignore this system node for now. And so to start creating particles in Typhlow, you would usually drop a new birth operator in here. Inside of Niagara, you would right click and say add emitter. So actually what we want to select is this empty template and say add. In Typhlow, all of your operators are listed down here. In Niagara, you need to click on one of these plus signs to access all of the different modules as they're called in Niagara, but modules, operators, same thing. Now in Typhlow to create new particles, you get the birth operators. In Niagara, they're referred to as spawn operators. So I'll go under emitter update, click on the plus sign and search for spawn and say spawn burst instantaneous, which by default will just give birth to one particle. Now in Typhlow, we also have given birth to one particle. If you go under display and say display large dots and set the multiplier to 10, and I can change the color to yellow so I can see it easily. In Niagara, you would go under initialize particle and here you have color mode and you can change that color mode to direct set and just give it a yellow color. Now to display the particle as a mesh sphere, I need to go under render, click on the plus sign and select mesh renderer. And in Typhlow, I would also need to add a mesh operator to be able to render this as a mesh. And next I need to assign a shape to the particle. So I would add a shape operator and instead of 2D I want to say 3D and set it to sphere and set the display operator to geometry. In Niagara I need to also assign the shape. So here under meshes I would search for sphere and just grab the default sphere that comes with Unreal Engine. Now, if I wanted to change the size of this sphere over time, first I need to go under initialize particle, mesh scale mode and set that to uniform. And here I can change the scale to two, three or 0.5. Same thing in Typhlow. If I wanted to change the scale of this, I would add a scale operator and change it to 200% or 50%. But we said we want to change the scale over time. And that's the main thing to understand about Niagara. In Niagara, if you want to change something over time, you need to add your operators or modules into the particle update category. In Typhlow, if you want to change the scale over time, you need to set the timing here to continuous. You can see previously it said on event entry, meaning that the scale is only set once and doesn't change over time. Continuous means that the scale will be changing over time. In Niagara, Particle spawn means on entry. Particle update means continuous. So I can click on the plus sign and I need the scale mesh size operator. And I need to turn this into a curve. So I'll click on the arrow here and say vector from float, right? Float is just a single number. So I need to convert this vector, which is three numbers, X, Y, and Z into one number. So I'll say vector from float. Now I can control the scale with just one number, again, three, one, and I can turn this into a curve so I can change it over time. So click on the arrow and say float from curve. And now as I go through my timeline, the sphere scales down over time based on this curve. In Typhlow, you could set the scale to relative add and set this to 101% and it will scale up over time gradually. Right, so both Niagara and Typhlow flow from top to bottom. The nodes are evaluated from top to bottom. For anything that you want to change over time, which would be your continuous in Typhlow, you would be putting the operators in particle update. For anything that you want to only create on entry, so set the size of the particle once, set the color once, um, set the lifetime once, you would only do that in the particle spawn category, which is again your on entry in Typhlow. That's the main difference between particle spawn and particle update. That's really all you need to understand about Niagara. Beyond that, all of your modules are under the plus sign over here. So the next thing I can add, for example, is speed. So I'll grab the speed operator 
and we said we only want one particle on frame zero and now the particle has speed in random 3D so we can set that particle Z and it will just go up. Timing here is set on entry so the particle is only given speed once. So to replicate this in Niagara I need to go to the particle spawn group, click on this plus sign and instead of speed here it's called add velocity. So add velocity operator is going to give you a few warnings. All you have to do is say fix issue. And by default, it's already set to 50 on the z-axis. So just like in Thai flow, the particle is going up. Now you'll notice that it keeps resetting and that's controlled with the system state loop duration. So the loop is set to five seconds. So every five seconds here, it resets. We can just set that to 20. Now to make the particle fall down in Thai flow, you would add a force operator and set the gravity strength to minus one. So now the particle keeps falling down and it doesn't really have enough strength to shoot up. So we need to set the initial speed uh, magnitude higher. So let's try 10. So now the particle actually shoots up and after some time it falls back down. Now notice that the force for the gravity timing is set to continuous because we need to continuously affect this particle with gravity in order for it to keep falling down. So again, to replicate that in Niagara, we need to be in the particle update category to continuously affect the particle with gravity. So I'll click on the plus sign and search for gravity force. That's what it's called here. And same as in 3ds Max, the particle doesn't really have enough velocity to shoot up and then fall down. So under add velocity, I'll set this to 500 instead of 50. And if we go back into our level and drop the Niagara system in here, I can just click on auto activate to reset it and the particle will fly up and then fall back down. And so now the final thing we need to do is have it collide with the floor. So in Niagara, again under particle update because I needed to continuously collide, click on the plus sign and search for the collision module. And now when I reset this, the particle flies up and collides with the ground and bounces around a little bit. In Thai flow, you would just add the collision operator and you need to give it something to collide with, a new plane. You may have to move this lower and now the particle will fly up and then collide with the floor and bounce around a little bit. Now how much it bounces, here is control with the bounce percentage, so I can set that lower to maybe just 5% and it won't bounce as much, it pretty much just lands and sticks to the ground now. In Unreal Engine, this is called restitution, so here I could set the restitution to just 0.2 and here also the sphere will just fall down and pretty much stay stuck to the ground. So the main differences are in the names of the operators. And then in Unreal Engine, you get a slightly higher complexity in terms of the floats and vectors and all that, which is something you get used to over time. Usually you just have to convert a vector to a float and then a float to a curve to get a curve like what we did here. You get all of your operators that you're used to. All of the main operators that you're used to from Typeflow, like collision, speed scale, you can find in Niagara as well, and they work the same. They have similar settings. It's just another particle system that actually is very similar to Typeflow. So if you've been curious about Niagara, but it just seemed a bit too complicated, I think that you can see now that it really isn't that much different. And you can very quickly create some cool real-time particle sims directly inside of Unreal Engine 5. So as always, I hope that you guys found this useful and I'll see you in the next one.